Hello, this is going to be chapter 12, Introducing the Pacemaker Rhythms. Objectives to Introducing the Pacemaker Rhythms. Define the concepts of an artificial pacemaker. Describe transcutaneous pacing. Discuss transcutaneous pacing. List three types of permanent pacemakers and identify the indications for pacing. Discuss the rules for interpretation of pacemaker rhythms. List the common problems associated with pacemakers. Explain the clinical significance of pacemaker rhythms. Artificial pacemaker rhythms. A device that, substitu that substitutes for the normal pacemaker cells of the heart's electrical conduction system. They may be necessitated when a patient's inherent electrical conduction pathways fail to function sufficiently. A pacemaker spike, a wave produced on the EKG by an artificial pacemaker. Artificial pacemaker rhythms. Patients who experience signs and symptoms related to extensive disease of the sinus node or symptomatic complete heart block are prime candidates for artificial pacing. Artificial pacemakers can be temporary or permanent. They initiate electrical impulses in specific locations of myocardial tissue. They have a generator and lead wires. The generator controls the rate and strength of electrical impulse. The lead wires relay electrical impulses to the myocardium. So the generator is the power supply and the lead wires are what are laid on specific sections of myocardium so that the pacemaker can send electrical stimulus to the heart. Temporary pacemakers used to sustain a patient's heart rate in emergency situations. Permanent pacemakers implanted inside the patient's upper left chest, most common, and are left in place. And these would be a long-term version of the temporary pacemakers. Temporary pacing. Transcutaneous pacing is the most common, commonly termed as external pacing, cardiac pacing. Consists of two large electrode pads commonly placed anterior and posterior position to conduct impulses through the patient's skin. The cardiac muscle cells depolarize in a normal fashion in response to this transcutaneous pacing. Transcutaneous pacing continued. Prior to transcutaneous patient pacing, patients should be supine, oxygen, IV, EKG monitor in place. Symptomatic bradycardia must be confirmed prior to implementing transcutaneous pacing procedures. Set the rate. Commonly in the range of 60 to 80 beats per minute. Initial voltage set to 0 amperes or 0 milliamps. An amper setting is gradually increased until capture is accomplished. You gain capture by two means. One is electrical capture, which means you're going to have a spike followed by a wide QRS on the monitor. The second way of knowing you have capture is you have an associated pulse with that beat. A transvenous pacing, which is through a vein, used to deliver electrical impulses to myocardial tissue. A lead wire is inserted through the skin, threaded into a, a large vein leading to the right side of the heart. It's controlled by an external power source to stimulate the atrium and travel through electrical conduction system producing depolarization. So this is a type of pacemaker that's called a transvenous pacemaker and they drop it into the right atrium and they can initiate pacemaking from that. Instead of going through the chest where you may have to use large amounts of energy, the transvenous pacer you do not. Um, it is directly in the tissue of the heart whenever you're firing it off and requires less milliamps. Transvenous pacing continued. Pacemakers are preset and programmed to function in two modes. Fixed rate, asynchronous, programmed to deliver electrical impulses at constant and selected rates, and demand, which are synchronous, programmed to generate electrical impulses when the patient's heart rate falls below a predetermined rate. So essentially demand and non-demand pacing. Permanent implanted pacemakers. Used most commonly when patients do not respond to pharmacological intervention, surgically implanted generator and a lead wire introduced into the heart through the central vein. 
Treatment of the patient with symptomatic bradycardia or complete heart block is what this is for, an artificial pacemaker. There are three types of pacemakers. There are atrial pacemakers, also known as a single chamber pace pacemaker. Lead wires inserted in the right atrium, stimulates atrium and travels down normal pathways through the ventricles. And then you have a ventricular pacemaker, also known as a single chamber pacemaker. Lead wire inserted in the right ventricle. Impulses produce ventricular depolarization. And we have AV sequential, also known as a dual chamber pacemaker. Two electrodes, one lead wire, one in the right atrium and one in the right ventricle. Impulses stimulate first the atria and then the ventricles. Indications for patient for pacing. Patients that present with persistent and symptomatic bradycardia, complete heart block, which will be a third degree block, third degree heart block, second degree type 2 heart block, or sick sinus syndrome. Artificial pacemaker rhythm. We're going to do this by the five step process, and the rate is going to depend on what they set it at. The rhythm, if pacing is there, it should be regular. If it's not there and on demand, it probably will be irregular. Is there a P wave before every QRS? Maybe absent or, or present, and that would depend on what type of pacemaker you have. If you only have a ventricular pacemaker, there will be no P waves present. But if you have an AV sequential pacemaker, there's a good chance that you will see a type of P wave. Um, are the P waves upright and uniform? And they're pretty much in a pacemaker rhythm, and that would depend on what type of pacemaker you have. And what is the length of the PR interval? Variable depends on the type of artificial pacemaker. Do all the QRSs look alike? Usually. Bizarre morphology presents with spikes. And what that means is, is you would get a spike followed by a wide QRS. The wide QRS is the ventricular muscle's response to that paced rhythm. And what is the length of the QRS complexes? And this is going to be greater than 0 0.12. This right here is an artificial pacemaker and it is an atrial pacemaker. Uh, this right here is atrial in origin. So this is where your pacer spike is. The atria responded and then gave you a, QR, a QRS complex. The QRS complex appears normal. Artificial pacemakers. Common problems associated with pacemakers are pretty much going to be battery failure, uh, decreased amplitude of pacemaker spike, and a slowing the rate considered a dire emergency. Uh, runaway pacemakers. Rarely seen a rapid read of electrical impulses discharge and results uh, and then failure to capture. When the lead wires are displaced or the battery fails, pacemakers can fail to capture. A pacemaker spike will be present on the EKG, but no follow, not followed by a QRS, or the heart doesn't have the ability to respond to it. Common problems associated with pacemakers. Failure of sensing devices in demand pacemakers. Demand sensing devices may fail to shut down. Heart's normal heart rate may uh, compete with the rate of the demand pacemaker. And that is going to be the end of chapter 12, Introduction to Paste Rhythms.